What's going on guys? TG or Thunder God here doing a pretty interesting video today. I'm going to be ranking the summits in Naruto. Um, I made this tier list up uh, and for anybody who wants to do this on your own, I'm going to link it down below. Now, I'll also say before we get into the video, this video is also being edited. I don't just upload tier lists because I think that's extremely lazy as content. So I'm just using the tier list as an easier way for me to gauge this. And I also added some tiers uh, just to make it a little easier to comprehend. So with that being said, if you enjoy me, enjoy this type of content, enjoy Naruto or anything like that, um, you know, like and subscribe, stay around see the good stuff and with that being said let's get into the video now starting off you'll notice that i don't have every summon here that is because i kept it really with the most relevant ones in this series um or like the main offensive ones that are used there's obviously many summons uh even anime exclusives um even off the bat you could note like just looking at the manga i haven't included uh kakashi's ninja hounds which is like okay you know that's not really that much offensively speaking it would be at the bottom of the list anyway so just keep that in mind but starting off we have f tier now F tier is probably like the worst of the worst. That doesn't mean these summons are weak or anything. And for example, right, I'll start off by putting um, Gengetsu's clan and uh, clam in F tier. Now, the thing about Gengetsu's clam is that it's a very strong summon in conjunction with Gengetsu. But the problem is on its own, it's not really that crazy. It just creates a mirage or uh, refraction. Uh, refraction. Refract. <laughs> I'm trying to say reflection because the data book statement and like description for this like talks about how it refracts like light particles using the water in the air this crazy thing but basically it creates a mirage it's very similar to like obito's kamui and that gengetsu can slip through it so he basically fights alongside it and that makes it you know pretty impressive uh and it's very durable on its own but offensively speaking it's not that crazy like if you put this against any of these other summons in a vacuum it's not going to be doing that well or it's not going to be doing any of this crazy stuff um or it's not gonna be able to it's not gonna be able to beat down any of these summons 1v1 so it's f tier for that reason um it's a very strong summon with a specific purpose but offensively speaking um on its own it's just not really powerful at all or like able to combat anything else and right next to it for the exact same reason i have uh the renegon panda which just shows up once uh, uh pain uses it to block um he basically uses it to block Jurassic fastest attack in Sage Mode, which is, it's pretty flex, it just shows up and disappears. Uh, you know, you can make the argument that it was used for that specific purpose, like the summon's just durable. It's a durable panda that's pulled from the realm where those uh, summons exist. Essentially though, it doesn't really do too much, doesn't really have any offensive capabilities, just exists to just stand there and, you know, be, be, block attacks, you know what I mean? So, that's, that's pretty much pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I probably have Ningami next. The thing about Ningami is that, he doesn't show up too much. It's just implied that he's somewhat above Genin Lee due to the fact that he's like treated as sort of a teacher to Lee uh, from him stopping the fight with Sasuke and Lee. To on top of this, Chaputi doesn't really make any entry. Guy just uses him as like a launch pad against Kisame. But he should have some offensive property considering like he seems to be a Taijutsu instructor almost in the same way that like there's Toad on uh, Sage teachers. It seems kind of similar in that regard. So he should have some offensive properties. Again, you can maybe say like he's not physically powerful enough to damage any of these two summons. That's fine. But considering he is somewhat of a mentor, he should have some offensive presence. But if you were to say, okay, because he's feetless, he shouldn't be able to break through these. Like because Onoki couldn't break through Gengetsu's clam and Jiraiya couldn't break through this. We have no potency showings for Nagami. That's fine too. So I'll leave him here. But it just should be noted that there should be some Taijutsu presence with him considering he's Lee's mentor. But moving past that, we have the next tier. Um, we'll start off with two years Doki. Now, these are pretty powerful. The thing that sets them apart, and, and I'll, actually I'll talk about them real quick. They're pretty powerful in the sense that on their own, they do have a lot of physical prowess. They're also able to make these like chakra worms that can like absorb the physical energies and like sap the chakra of whoever they tag. Like Shikamaru notes this in the fight. The thing that holds these summons back is that they have to be directly controlled by Tuya's flute. We don't know if they can be controlled otherwise. Like maybe that's they kind of submit control to Tuya, but we just know that like offensively speaking, they are more capable. It's just like they do run with that. So we don't know, but they should be above these just for having more basic offensive presence. Right next to that, I would have oh, Kitomaru's spider. Just due to the same reasons here. Um, it should be in the same tier as Tuya, as they should be relative to one another. Top of this, um, you know. The thing about this spider is that it's a bit more automated considering it can drop uh, all those mini spiders that have the webs on them that was even slowing down Neji's rotation. So you can make the argument like it would slow down everything here or just be able to chuck it even if it's destroyed like when then because you know this thing's durability isn't that crazy either like Neji one taps it with the gentle fist. 
it's just full of the same like chakra uh, threads that Kitomaru himself was using. So this thing actually is pretty impressive in of itself and just should be above the Doki just due to how it's more, more automated, has a little bit more offensive presence um, and be able to slow down everything on this list. So I think that's pretty fair. Next up, I'd have Tamari's Kamaritachi. Now this thing, it's it's got some interesting lore behind it. Essentially like I'm, if you haven't seen any of Donzo's video, uh, the Donzo videos I've covered on Donzo, you wouldn't know this, but essentially Donzo's win style is compared to this. It's basically what Tamari's win style is named after. And essentially, it's like a, a, it's almost a feat to have your win style output as much force as this thing. Like, for example, when Donzo has his win style amped by the Baku, it's compared to a horde of Kamaritachi that would like slice down a whole forest. So, we don't know how, exactly how powerful this thing is on its own, but considering it was just being amped slightly or like a, by a more, I, I'll put it like this it was being amped by basic Tamari win style and it was able to slice down the whole forest. So, on its own, it should have more offensive presence. Uh, it should be able to one shot anything here again maybe you could say like okay these aren't don't have that much like ap or like physical prowess to like break through these that's fine because these have no offensive presence anyway so it doesn't matter too much so i think that's fine um it's very implied that the sand ninja are more of a rival to the sound ninja anyway even though they did come in when the sound ninja were more exhausted so i think that's perfectly fine next after that i'd probably have the snakes that were attacking the leap village these are interesting because they're very similar to Pain Summons and the fact that they're very difficult for the entirety of the Leaf to deal with. It kind of comes up to, uh, Jirai almost has to come up and intervene, I believe. Uh, even the anime profile discusses these as like oh, evil that only Orochimaru can control. Again, very similar to uh, Pain Summons. They should be very powerful due to the fact that they're like suppressing the entirety of the Hidden Leaf. And they, you know, I, I guess you could say like they require a bunch of Shinobi to summon, which again, I don't think that's really a feat, but you know, suppressing the leaf is a bit of a feat because they do have a lot of impressive Shinobi uh, in the leaf. Probably under that, I'd probably put this here is Sasuke's Hawk. Now I'm tempted to put this in C tier, but Sasuke's Hawk just really is featless. The only real like offensive feat it has is like grabbing Donzo's like futon or like wind style uh, shuriken. And just like chucking it back at Donzo, which maybe is like more of a reaction feat for it. But in terms of like this thing having abilities on its own, maybe you could say like it would be able to beat these or be up here. Um, it just doesn't do too much in the fights that Sasuke summons it. And it just really, how can I describe it? He just uses it to stand on it. Like in the Kaguya fight, it gets taken out instantly when he summons it. So it's nothing too much there. Uh, it is able to evade Donzo's win style, so maybe you could say it has speed greater here, but I think this is fine. Maybe you could argue like Orochimaru's like giant snakes are more of a counter to this. However, the hawk is in the air, so maybe it has a distinct advantage in that regard. Um, I think this is perfectly fine though. Um, it is rather featless, but in the fights it, 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 it's in, it does display better feats um, and good like speed feats and keeping up with Sasuke somewhat. So I would make the case that off speed alone, it should be above everything here. Um, even if you think like maybe these snakes would be able to beat that. So I'll probably keep it like this since I think it's just too lacking to say it beats the snakes. But everything else here, I think you can make a, a fine case for Sasuke's Hawk being above. Next up, we have C tier. Um, I'll, I'll start off with like the Renegon Centipede. That gets one shot by Sakura. Now I will say getting one shot by Sakura isn't like the biggest anti feat since she's kind of nutty in Shippuden with her physical prowess. But you know, pretty standard even by the Renegon summons. It's nothing too, too, too impressive. Uh, you know, there's a lot more impressive Renegon summons uh, with far more unique abilities. So I wouldn't say like the Centipede is anything really to like. I, there's nothing really to hype up about it. It gets summoned in, even in the anime. It doesn't do anything too much differently. So I'd say, yeah, pretty standard Rinnegan summon. C tier is pretty fine for it. Next up, I would probably have the Rinnegan, the Rinnegan Crab. Now, the Rinnegan Crab is interesting because it, it basically creates foam and kind of swims in and tries to like sneak attack Jiraiya and then just gets like taken out by like Roar of the Lion's Mane. So it's it's it doesn't do anything too crazy and i will say like I, I i don't think it's as offensively capable maybe as this summon since it wasn't summoned against the leaf and i do think that is a bit telling um i don't think it's absolute and this does have some more distinct abilities for example right if these two are facing off it can just flood the battlefield with foam and just kind of swim around and like kind of pop up and take this thing out. So I do think it is above this. Um, even if they are in the same tier and like physical prowess, it does have more of a distinct advantage. But you know, could be debatable. Again, same tier, just Runagon summons. You know, standard. Not even uh, on the more impressive end. Aside from that, I'd probably actually leave this as C tier. 
uh, just due to the fact that, you know, I think everything else is a, a, a pretty definitive step above that. And I'll start off by placing, like, the Buffalo or Bull uh, and the Rhino next to each other in B tier. I think these two accomplish the same purpose. You could maybe say, like, the Rhino has a bit of a, a tougher exterior because... The animal path actually does sit inside this thing's mouth, which maybe can indicate it does have more protective properties. Uh, that, uh, it does the same thing with the chameleon again in the dry fight and against um, when Nagato's fighting uh, QB Naruto. Basically sits in the mouth to be undetected and protected. So I think you kind of can infer that it has a bit more defensive layering due to that. But, you know, they're relatively the same, same like physical prowess. You know, they're giant big. Um, like, you know, they're able to run through everything. They, the Rhino gets tossed by Naruto. The Bull gets taken out relatively qu uh, quickly. So these should be definitively above C tier just due to how there's a bit more definitive uh, physical prowess, um, especially in the frequency they get summoned compared to these. Uh, they seem to be a lot more powerful. And you kind of, you could probably determine that just off looking at them uh, for sure. And, and I'll say this while I'm on the topic of Renegon. Uh, you might notice the King of Hell is not in this video. That is because... It does nothing beside, like, without Nagato or uh, Pain. It literally showcases none of the abilities other than, like, with Nagato where it just has extra eyes. So, even if I put it on the list, it'd be F tier. Just FYI, uh, someone might say I forgot that. Uh, after that, though, I would probably put the Renegon Bird up here. Uh, it, it does pretty well against Mr. Gamakin. Like, it blows him bla uh, back even though he's able to block the attack. But... By the conventional standard, like this does have a bit of an advantage against everything on this list because it is a flight animal. Uh, it is able to just really just come in and like tag anything below it with its beak. So it should be pretty impressive in that regard. It should be confidently above it just via like how it's a bird and how it kind of attacks. And probably in the middle of these, I'd have the Baku. Now the Baku has kind of the same physical prowess as these maybe you could argue it's a little it, it wouldn't be able to breach the rhino's armor but it does have its inhalation which was like forcing sasuke susano to like uh pretty much like grip its hands into the concrete or like stone but to avoid getting dragged in so i do think it is pretty impressive and this thing was also like sucking in rocks and stuff like that so i do think on top of like being somewhat of a physical match for these two uh, it does it showcase like extra abilities which would be helpful helpful how uh, useful against these guys it's hard to say. Honestly, you can definitely make a case for it being at the end of this. I'll put it on here just because it does have those extra abilities. But, you know, the Baku does have some, you know, it, it honestly could go around, but they just share very similar builds. I mean, you can maybe argue the Baku is a bit bigger based on, like, the sizes we see. So, there is something to that. And then, you know, obviously the bird would just be a step above because the inhalation wouldn't matter because it could fly. Excuse me. The bird could fly out of range. So, I think that's pretty confident for B tier. This is, like, the mid-tier Renegon summons. Um... Again, if you were going to argue like off the idea that the Leaf Village, uh, like holding the Leaf Village back is a feat, you could definitely say maybe this, which I might do actually. I might just put Orochimaru Snakes a bit higher just due to the fact that like stopping the Leaf Village is, it, it's, it's a feat. It's kind of a feat uh, in this series to like hold back an entire village, especially when you look at some of the combinations the Ambu were doing on the... On, on the Renegon Summons, it kind of puts it into perspective. So I'll actually move Orochimaru Snakes up just uh, for that same criteria. Next up on B plus tier... I have Mr. Gamakin and Gamahiro. Now, these two are literally the same. You could, they're very interchangeable. Um, you could maybe say like Mr. Gamakin's a little more impressive because we see better feats from him, but they're very, they're honestly painted as very relative to Gamma Bunta. So, on, you know, very, very interchangeable. I'm just putting Mr. Gamakin ahead because we, uh, we see more feats with him against the other Renegon summons. So I think that's perfectly fine. These two seem, they're able to tangle like all these summons and anything below them on the list on uh, 1v1 they should be able to take that i mean that's just displayed from their fight with pain after that i'd have the renegon chameleon the renegon chameleon is really impressive due to how it's not able to be sensed and it, it's on a, it's not able to be sensed right and you, you we see this in the dry fight but even more so than that we have qb naruto with his enhanced threat perception he's able to sense hatred evil intent from the edo tensei and whatnot and he's not able to sense this thing not once but twice so it's it's really impressive in that regard and it's got some great feats on that uh just be able to like gra uh, grab you up and like restrain you so nothing actually on this list should be able to sense it in which case it could definitely enact some strategies there uh and right above that actually i'd probably put ma just because ma does have some impressive sage jutsu and she does hard counter the the chameleon in that regard uh you might argue that ma might not be above uh, Mr. Gamakin and Gamahiro, but I'll get into that a bit later since she's also able to kind of throttle pain summons along with Pa. 
I think she should be above these for, and I'll talk about this a little more, but even her sage art techniques are very impressive. Uh, even on her own, like with her frog song, she was able to suppress like uh, some of Pain summons that were coming at him. So she make, you can maybe make the case like she'd be able to do the same thing to everything lower on her than Liz. So Ma is pretty impressive in that regard. After mod, actually maybe stop B plus tier he, he, um, right here. I don't know why I'm struggling to speak for some reason. Um, on A tier, I would definitely put the three, the big three, three-way deadlock. I definitely would put uh, th this order, uh, Manda, Gimabunta, and Katsuyu. The reason I put this order is because uh, Manda was kind of taking them both on like a 2v1. And I understand there's the whole rock, paper, scissors with them. But if you look over the fight uh, between Manda, Gimabunta, and Katsuyu, he really is holding uh, his own in that 2v1 and uh, to the point that Tsunade actually has to step in and use Gamabunta's blade to like stab him in the mouth. Um, there's many times where like Katsuyu or Gamabunta on their own can't really handle Manda. So, you know, obviously all three are relative. It's the three-way deadlock. It's the rock, paper, scissors. That's the whole point. But I do think they are, um, I do think this is the order and strength in which they uh, uh, come in. After that, uh, I'll make it easy. I'll put... Uh, second manda on here just because it's verbatim stated to be better than manda in almost every conceivable way strength speed even sensory capability so that should be pretty self-explanatory uh after that i would aota's interesting because we know we know he's definitely not stronger than manda or second manda we just know he's relative his strength is very close to theirs the question is if he's stronger than gamma bunta it's a bit harder to determine maybe you could say via him being a snake might give him a bit of an advantage I'll say uh, it's a little harder. I think putting him in this order is fine just via like Snake being greater than Toad. But you could for sure put Gamma Bunta in front of him. In which case, I'd also put Gamma Kichi right next to Gamma Bunta just due to the fact that uh, he's able to take Gamma Bunta's place. And give me a, the thing about Gamma Bunta is that Gamma Bunta is uh, cited in the anime profiles and data book as the strongest large Toad. So he's pretty definitive, definitively above Mr. Gamakin. And Gamahiro. So, you know, Mr. or Gamakichi being like relative to him is perfectly fine. Um, and the fact that he was able to take uh Gamabunta's place in replacement compared to these other toads, I think is telling of that. So that he should be fine there. Katsuyu, the problem with Katsuyu is that she just doesn't have that many offensive properties. I will say her acid is kind of crazy. It's like disintegrating rocks, and like she even thinks from her fights with Orochimaru would be able to take him down. Now, whether how true that is or not, we don't know, especially since Orochimaru is the one who brings that idea up. But, you know, aside from that, she's able to like multiply herself to escape attacks. But realistically, she's more of like the healer. Um, we see that in the fights that she's in. So I think I'd rather put this as the order. Or I'd probably have Aota and Gamakichi right there. Um, I might stick with that, but I'll put I'll put Aota. I, I, I'm kind of torn on Aota versus Gamabunta, but you could maybe say like because Gamabunta's like used to spar with Manda, it'd be above Aota, which is fine. But uh, Manda was gonna beat Gamabunta one v one. There are many times where that's the case, so I'll probably keep it like that for now. But just keep in mind like these can be uh, swapped around however you wish. After that, honestly, we have Ibuse now. He's very hard to place because we don't see too much of him. Now, I will say like every conceivable like lore shot or like lore discussion with Hanzo talks about him with his Salamander. And what his Salamander does is it shoots poison gas out, paralyzing the opponent for Hanzo to go in and like finish them off. That's why he did a Conqueror and he's about finishing before Mifune come in. You could maybe imply that it's on the tier of Chio, maybe Sasori, due to how Chio notes that she fought it multiple times. The same Chio, even her old age, is not dying to like a KCM Naruto clone. So Chio's very impressive. Uh, her, Hanzo are like on that Hiruzen tier. They're honestly ridiculous in their prime. So you could definitely say, you say might be able to like be right here. Um, just due to how his poison could probably paralyze everything below him on the list. It, it's tough to say. You have to make some um, assertions there. And there is a limit on his poison as well. He has to recharge it at a certain point. So maybe he's not as strong as the big three in terms of the deadlock for lack of information. His poison fog, you could argue, would probably affect the toads and Katsuyu. I wouldn't say the snakes though because the snakes do have an innate poison resistance like the snake teachings do. Um, even Sasuke after losing his curse mark still has a degree of poison resistance just from being under Orochimaru's tutelage uh, and having the curse mark. So, you know, uh, even in the anime extension of Hanzo versus the Sanin, he body flickers with Ani Boost, which is the, the coolest thing, Urbi say, uh, which is just the coolest thing ever that he's able to do that. But like, it kind of gives the idea that maybe it's not like the most combative and that it just kind of like, it, it's more so implied that it just flooded the battlefield with poison while Hanzo went in and swept up with his poison resistance. So I'll say here, 
But you could definitely throw him up on around A tier, d depending on where you want. Just for lack of, you know, lack of showings, it's kind of harder to say. Like, we just don't have too much definitively to, to put him any higher. At the end of A tier, I'd probably have Pa. This might come as a uh, surprise. I'll say this. First and foremost, Pa is exempt from the statements uh, regarding Jiraiya being the strongest Toad. Because the statements more so refer to him as the, the, lar the strongest large Toad. Which is more so implying like the large summons. Like the large like big boys. On top of that, you could also just uh, chop it up chop it up to like Ma uh, Pa not being introduced in the stories. Uh, the story at that point. Pa has great Sage Art. He has most of the same abilities as Ma with like the, the sound based Genjutsu. He can also paralyze Pain Summit. The thing about Pa... Is that he's able to throw down with Sage Mo Naruto. He's basically the responsible for teaching Sage Mo Naruto Frog Kumite. And they're just going at it sparring consistently. He also has some ridiculous raw strength. So Pa is very impressive. And even if you say like that Sage Mo Naruto isn't as strong as like the fully complete one. A, a that is after he masters Sage Mo. So he does have that raw strength. He's more so learning how to use it on combat. But Pa's able to keep pace with Naruto as Naruto develops with Frog Kumite. So he more so scales to Sage Mo Naruto. Who would just slam everything on this list? So, you know, he has he's pretty crazy in that regard when you think about it. Um, right, he should be able to toss a lot of these people too, just because we see him like toss the statue, like the large toad statue. So it's not even if like her size is a big issue, but he also does have sage arjuts that might be able to take out a bunch of these summons. We do know it's potent. It just slices through the Renegon Chameleon, no difficulty. So pause crazy. Pause absolutely absurd. Um, and you know, this this being like maybe if I put my pa together, they might be A plus tier. So yeah, that's pretty absurd, but pause should be top of A. Um, after the or around top of A as well should be the constantly replenishing Renegon dog. I don't know if you can necessarily say it's above Pa. Here's the thing, right? Because the Renegon dog can be dealt with. It's just its ability is so broken. Like this is the this is the Renegon dog was getting slammed on by a QB Naruto's Rasen Shuriken and still replicating. So you have to ask yourself, like, do do any of these summons? have the innate ability to maybe deal with this in some other way. In which case, it's kind of hard to say. Like, even in the anime version of Jiraiya vs. Pain, he sends the frogs. He doesn't even deal with it. He sends the frogs to, like, a toad's some, a stomach just to deal with it. So maybe you could argue they could be sealed away. Um, the Jutsu Caster could be attacked, which is even what, like, Konoha was trying to do because Konoha couldn't deal with these summons. So they're like, all right, forget it. We just got to get the Jutsu Caster. This is not working out. So you could definitely say this. Maybe you could argue... um. Ibusa could definitely poison this thing um, and, and, you know, deal with it in that regard. I'm honestly really tempted to put Hanzo Salamander up here uh, just via its lore applications and how, how crazy that is. Uh, I just, you know, it's, it's hard. It's not, I'm just not as comfortable with it. I'll probably choose a middle ground and say it's above the Toad Summit. It also is a questionable because we don't know if the three-way deadlock has any knowledge of the poison uh, gas. It's just tough because it like the poison gas is paralysis, but it should be able to affect most of these. But I'll probably put you said like right here, just for the sake of like his poison should be able to affect everything here. Maybe that's Wang. Maybe I'm gonna get uh maybe I'm gonna get flamed in the comments, but I just I like Hanzo a lot. So I I'll put that there. Uh instant paralysis poison might not be effective against the snakes. The dog, it might be effective, but that's a little questionable. We just haven't seen it. Um, along with like the Ross and Shuriken, which is compared to like poison as well. And it's just, it's basically able to come back from that. So you could definitely say that, but I'll probably, I'll probably keep this right here. Next up on A plus tier, we have Enma. Uh, Enma, you know, everybody knows the statement of Enma being the strongest summoned creature. Even if you argue that's maybe a situation of like part one. Uh, I believe the exact statement is actually many say he's the most powerful creatures that can be summoned. Pretty absurd statement. And at face value, you can just take this as... You can take this literally or you can view it as an extension of Hiruzen's own lore being based on reputation or in the eyes of the common people. Uh, or if you take it as true, which I do think it is true, it could be um, it could be one of those situations where this is true via the information present uh, currently in the series, which even if that's the case, it would still be above uh, Manda, Gamabunta, and Katsuyu, which would still put him like at this tier or above. The thing about... The thing that's crazy about Enma as well is that it's kind of displayed that he's almost a rival or a pseudo rival 
to Hiruzen or someone who's like shown to fight alongside Hiruzen. The anime profiles discuss it as like he's basically been. It, we're, we're, there's a there's a couple of pretty very good statements for him. Um, the old white haired monkey survived tri uh, turbulent times with the third Okage. It also goes a little bit in depth of all the monkey of all animals. Monkeys have intelligence and physical form closest to humans. Enma's extreme abilities are displayed in the battle alongside the third Okage against the threat posed by Orochimaru. So it's kind of like implied that it, it, that he's more so like fighting alongside Hiruzen and just has this long history of combat with him giving him like this pseudo rival or like pseudo like level to Hiruzen and it's even described in the data book or guidebook I believe like discussing how it's not even a relationship of like master or slave it's more so like two brothers or two equals fighting alongside each other so Enma's absolutely ridiculous um even if you go off more more his more basic stuff he's still pretty pretty absurd next up we have S tier uh, now, S tier, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to just throw these two in because um, this is pretty self-explanatory. Nine Tails and Ghetto Statue, pretty much this, like, absolutely obliterate everything lower than them on the list. Uh, Ghetto Statue pretty much made a whole company with, like, you know, Choza, Choji, all these people. They just made them look like clowns. And think about the Ghetto Statue is just on top of its insane durability, you know, taking Raikiri, gated, guy, uh, gated uh, guys attacks you know the a tails punches um it just took on the fusion of two companies since kitsuchi's company went over and assisted uh Daru's company so this thing is no joke um same thing with the qb uh pretty self-explanatory strongest tailed beast uh you know turning the world to ash a lot of planetary scaling all this crazy stuff for the nine tails all these crazy feats that it has uh, even the portions of its chakra what it can do are absurd um this might be debatable uh nine tails versus ghetto statue i would argue that the not well for for starters you know who is controlling the ghetto statue and the state of it does matter somewhat as when madara and nagato both summon it it doesn't have the tail beast inside it so maybe you could say like that does make a difference with the amount of power it can output um but at the same time right like even though i'd make the case like the nine tail still has more destructive capability and like we don't know if the ghetto statue would be able to tank a tail beast bomb from it it's, the only the only showings of like a tail beast bomb shown to be effective is when uh it's transforming into the ten tails and even then it just seems to be more vulnerable to the point that obito feels the need to like block up basic rasengan from naruto to stop it uh, i'll say this I i'll say this about the ghetto statue too whoever's controlling it does matter because uh, you have nagato who's like doing um the soul dragon and then you have Madara who, who might uh, can like chain up the tail beast with the ghetto statue. So you might be able to argue like whoever's using the ghetto statue would actually be able to seal the nine tails um, and vice versa. Now, I, again, that's like dependent on the user. Um, I think on their own, the nine tails is still more impressive just based on how like it can operate more. Whereas the ghetto statue kind of does need someone to force it to do something. So I would say like the nine tails generally, you know, uh, via it's like Bijou bomb lore and all that stuff. On top of the fact that like the ghetto statue uh, might not have enough to like permanently take down the nine tails. I mean, there's no permanently taking it down, but like even like it's lightning attacks, we don't know. We don't really have any showings for it um, beyond the fact that it just eliminated a company. Uh, we don't know if it actually be able to damage the nine tails hide at all, which bear, which we don't even see damage throughout the series. The only like semblance of that is like half of the nine tails inside of Naruto, and even then, like the Ross and Shirk can only really graze its chest. So you know. The other is that I would generally have the Nine Tails above the Ghetto Statue, but I will acknowledge whoever's controlling the Ghetto Statue could probably bink up the Nine Tails. S tier is pretty self-explanatory, even though you know the, I think these could be argued around. Um, these two just stand a definitive tier above everything else. Last up, we have uh, the Edo Tensei, which does count as the Summoning Jutsu. Now, I'm actually going to add a row above this one, and change the color, and add a question mark on it, and that's where the Edo Tensei will go. Now. The reason I say the Edo Tensei is question mark, um, you know, and is variable because the Edo Tensei could go on any one of these groups. It just entirely depends on who you summon, right? And the user of the Jutsu. Um, I will say, like, I'll just talk about the Edo Tensei generally as there are variations like Orochimaru and Kabuto's with Kabuto's variation being more developed. But generally speaking, right, the fact that you can range from like a random uh, Edo Tensei Shinobi who's like, for example, in the war, like there's this magnet style user that Naruto one shots and seals like instantly. Um, and the fact that it can range from that to like Edo Madara and Hashirama is just absolutely absurd. So, you know, like for example, like Edo Madara and Hashirama would be like uh, this way above S tier, like up here. 
Um, and then you'd have that magnet dude who's like garbage, nothing, doesn't really do anything in the series. Um, and then, you know, if you have all this plethora, large range of shinobi, uh, who could just fall into any one of these categories. So, because of how the Edo Tensei is so variable and how you can really just summon anybody with it, I mean, it just means that, like, the, the, the tiering for it can go on itself. That's the list. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I sure did. Uh, let me know your guys' thoughts down below if you agree, disagree, why. I want to see what you guys come up with. Uh, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.